Welcome to just one of Skillcap's famous class guides that are the most valuable resource available that actually help you improve in Arena. This is just one of many videos that are a part of a comprehensive course for how to play Disc Priest like a pro. We spent hundreds of hours developing these courses with players that have spent thousands of hours perfecting their craft. This allows you to learn all the secrets and strategies of the world's best in just a matter of minutes. For everything you need to go from feeling hopeless in PvP to being the teammate everyone wants and actually start climbing, be sure to check out Skillcapped after this if you're serious about improving. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to part 2 of 4 in this Discipline Priest course. By the end of this course, you should know everything that you need to know about Disc Priest inside of an arena setting. Step 1, we took a look at building your character, which talents, covenant, and even which legendaries you should be opting to choose. Step 2, which is this video, will be taking a look at how to heal inside of Arena, including how to deal with burst damage. Then in Step 3, we're getting into the tactics, where we talk about CC and setting up kills. Then, finally, for our fourth and final step, it's all about playstyle, where we discuss how you should be looking to play inside of Arena. Kicking things off first, the most important task as any healer is to know how to heal through sustained damage that the enemy is doing. Now, you probably already know the answer to this, and it's what's drawn you to Discipline Priest in the first place. Atonement. Atonement allows you to heal your allies with a portion of the damage you deal, but to fully utilize this very niche way of healing, you first have to understand how Atonement works. Atonement is applied via your Shadow Men, Power Word Radiance, and Power Word Shield. However, if you're playing with the Trinity PvP talent, only your Power Word Shield will apply it. How Atonement works is simple. 50% of all damage that you deal heals your allies that have Atonement, with this amount being increased by a further 20% if you select Trinity. This 20% is additive and not multiplicative, so Trinity is incredibly strong for consistent healing. Bear in mind though that it's only your own spells which contribute to Atonement healing. So for instance, PvE trinkets will not. It's also worth knowing that damage reduction effects or defensive cooldowns that opponents use do not affect the amount that you'll heal with Atonement. All right. So now with a better understanding of how Atonement works, let's take a look at which abilities contribute to Atonement healing. It's basically all of your damage abilities with the exception of Shadow Word Death. Alright, so inside of Arena, Atonement is your way of dealing with the sustained damage of your opponents, and in an ideal world, you'll always want to aim to do as much of your healing as possible with Atonement as you can. It's your most efficient mana-wise, and also of course contributes to your team's damage. When healing with Atonement, your first priority is to get up your Purge the Wicked, and the more targets the better. Picture this as a druid's rejuvenation. The more you have out on your enemies, the more healing you're going to be doing, as well as also giving you Power of the Dark Side procs, increasing your penance healing. Then you'll want to make sure that you're using Power Word Soulless off CD. This does some decent initial healing, but more importantly, provides you with mana back. And then there's penance. Now, penance can be used differently depending on the scenario. If you're healing the consistent spread pressure from something like a Warlock or Shadow Priest, for instance, Penance is best used offensively, so on an enemy. Whereas if you're healing single target sustained damage from something like a Cleave, you'll want to use Penance defensively, so on your ally. That's the three most important abilities, Solace, Purge of the Wicked, and Penance, with the two foremost being the biggest contributing factors to your atonement healing and way of dealing with sustained damage. Now, of course, there is also Smite which is a fantastic way at dealing with sustained damage when you have the time. Now, we'll get into the mana cost and min-maxing later in the video, but Smite costs 200 mana and heals for a very minor amount. So, if there isn't much damage going out and you can get away with casting this, then you should always add it to your rotation. So, to recap, get Atonement up on the target, taking damage primarily with Power Word Shield. Get Purge of the Wicked up on at least your main target, but the more the better. Power Word Solace off of cooldown, and then make sure to penance off CD, either defensively or offensively, depending on the scenario. Then fill any downtime or very low points of damage with smites. Atonement acts as a nice blanket of healing for your party or yourself, but there are a lot of times when it just won't be enough to heal through the incoming damage. In these times, you're going to have to increase your healing throughput, and to do this, there are a few different abilities you can use. There is Power Word Radiance, Shadow Mend, and Mind Blast. But you should always remember that these abilities are merely a throughput increase, and you should always prioritize and keep to your sustained healing rotation, just use these abilities to instead recover. So first of all, let's touch on Shadow Mend, as this is your primary way of dealing with high amounts of damage. In terms of mana efficiency, Shadow Mend isn't too bad. It's 
not great by any means, but it's not going to cause you to run out of mana instantly. So if you see your target's health dropping and you don't have penance and atonement isn't going to cut it, you can throw out some shadow mends. Shadow mend is also a fantastic ability due to being on the shadow school of magic. So if there are ever times where you get kicked on holy, you can always recover with this spell. But Shadow Mend is of course a casted ability, and in those times where you really need to pick somebody's health up fast, and in an instant you've got Power Word Radiance. Now on its own, Radiance barely does any healing, but combined with Ultimate Radiance and the Shining Radiance Conduit, as well as having Twist of Fade Up, it turns your Radiance into practically a Lay on Hands. The drawback of Radiance though is its very hefty mana cost. And because of that, it should always be your final means to recover your panic button, let's say. Relying heavily on Radiance to be your main way of healing people up will cause you to run out of mana incredibly quickly, but in some cases it will be absolutely necessary. But do always try to rely on your Penance or Shadow Men before considering throwing out this spell. Try to make it a goal to heal as little with Radiance as you can during your games. Another way to heal through burst damage, which may seem unorthodox, is with Shadow Fiend. When you think Shadow Fiend, your first thought is just a mana CD, which does some damage. Well, yes, but Shadow Fiend actually deals very high damage, which contributes to your atonement healing, making using your little friend during enemy burst CDs a great way to, in turn, not only get mana back, but also help heal through some of their pressure. Then there's Mind Blast. Now, Mind Blast at first glance probably doesn't seem like a good way to deal with higher damage output, but what if I told you that it does about the same effective healing as a Shadow Mend while also contributing damage? Now, there are two aspects to the spell. You've got the initial healing from Atonement, but then you've also got the huge damage absorb, which will absorb the damage that the target of your Mind Blast does. Essentially, look at it this way. If the target you want to heal is about to die and needs an initial heal, you're better off Shadow Mending or Radiancing. But if your target's dipping low and isn't at risk of dying, Mind Blast should be cast over Shadow Mend. It's also worth noting that as Mind Blast absorbs the damage the target deals, it's not affected by healing reduction effects like Mortal Strike or even Dampening, which makes it even stronger than you might first think. Final way of dealing with burst damage via throughput is going to be Mind Games. Now, Mind Games is usually seen as this huge offensive CD to use during kill attempts. And yes, that is correct, and is its best use, but we'll get into more detail on that later. However, you will find there are some cases, especially in less setup-based priest comps, where you'll want to use this solely for healing. Mind Games itself does a large burst of atonement healing, and then even converts the target's damage dealt into healing, while even restoring mana. Mind Games, if used on a target just about to deal some damage, or that has dots out, could effectively offer anywhere up to 20k healing in a single global. So again, to recap, to increase your throughput, you should first always look to Mind Blast. Then, if you need some raw healing and have time to cast, you should be utilizing Shadow Mend. And finally, if you need some instant healing in a flash, Radiance is the best choice, but beware of the mana cost. Meanwhile, if you're not doing a setup anytime soon and need some mana back, or just want to pump some burst atonement healing, Mind Games can also be used. But remember, like we said earlier, it's best used for those setups. Anyway, moving on, to set the scene, the starting room gates just opened and you're walking out into an arena match. How do you prepare at the start of the arena game? What should your first globals be? Well, first and foremost is getting up atonement onto your teammates and yourself. This is always done with Power Word Shield. Afterwards, you can then sit down, drink, and recover that mana. Mana efficiency is incredibly important on disc, as you'll learn. This is important for a few factors. It's going to give you the small buffer of a shield, going to get atonement up and give you trinity if you're playing it. Not to mention, even if you're not playing with trinity, putting up pre-shields and atonement on targets will then give you access to your mastery. How mastery works is that your healing is flat out increased on targets with atonement. So things like shadow mend and radiance. Let's say you get caught in CC in the opener and your teammate drops low. Once the CC ends, then you're forced to Radiance. Well, although spells like Radiance or Shadow Mend apply Atonement when you're not playing Trinity, their initial use to apply that Atonement will not give you the mastery benefit. Disc Priests, generally speaking, though, don't have to deal with damage in the opener, as a lot of their compositions are the ones getting the openers themselves. But even in these cases, getting up Atonement will make your setups a lot more potent, but more on this later. Alright, next up we have a big one, something every single Discipline Priest first starting out will always struggle with the most, healing while being trained. We've all been there, you're getting railed by a Windwalker or Warrior doing the most obscene damage possible, and every guide you've read has told you to try to maximize your atonement healing, but you end up just pressing Shadow Mend or Radiance on yourself until you inevitably run out of mana in 2 minutes and die while the enemy healer is chilling on full mana. Well, in this section, we're going to go over how you can prevent this from happening. 
First of all is picking the correct talents. Now we covered this in part one of this course, but if you're going to be trained or think that you're at risk of it, you're going to need two talents. These are masochism and dome of light. So the gate opens and you've got the enemy running straight at you. What do you do? Well, the first tip is to delay them connecting as long as possible. Now, this should be a given, but some players just run in and let the melee connect to them instantly for free. Instead, look to use a pillar to run around max range, force them to either blow some mobility or start on your partner. This tip may seem extremely minor, but trust us, any time spent delaying or preventing the enemy from connecting is going to help a ton. Next up is our talent choice of masochism. This not only removes the damage portion of Shadowmen, more importantly, has a 10% damage reduction attached to it. When being trained, you should ideally look to keep this up 100% of the time, and this can be done prior to the enemy even connecting. Now, I know your atonement healing may feel like it's doing nothing at all while getting trained. Well, it may not be one-to-one -one healing the damage that you're taking, but it really adds up and helps to give you some blanket healing. So don't neglect your solace. Make sure that you have Purge the Wicked out and maintained. The same for Mind Blast. A Mind Blast on the target training you will absorb a lot of their incoming damage allowing your atonement to put in some extra work. Disc Priest is also very fortunate to have multiple schools of magic at their disposal to heal through pressure. So making the most out of these two schools and using them correctly will make kicks a non-issue. So when you're being trained, if you're going for Shadow Mend on yourself and get interrupted, you can then cast a Penance and vice versa. Overall though, while being trained, a large amount of your healing should be coming from atonement still with both Shadow Mend and Penance defensively being the way to maintain your health. In threes, you're also more than likely going to have Ultimate Radiance, which you can use with Twist of Fate for almost Lay on Hands levels of healing. But be careful here. Radiance is a crux that you don't want to rely on, and in twos, you shouldn't really be picking it solely due to its high mana cost and the fact that you can easily deal with the damage without it. So although you do ultimately have that fallback, always try to look to use Shadow Mend or Penance defensively to heal through elevated pressure and let your atonement do the work. What really allows this strategy to work is correctly rotating your defensive CDs and trading them proactively. This is a concept that we're going to go into in detail in part 3 of this course, but it's incredibly important to do as to not fall behind and be caught in a position where you're going to have to spam non-atonement heals. Things like Psychic Scream on the DPS training you, or even utilizing mind control again will buy you time and help you to heal and survive while being trained. But once again, more on this later. And then next up, while I am reluctant to put it as a way to survive, it has to be mentioned. Priests excel in certain comps, comps that usually cater to their needs. So things like mages or rogues with a ton of peels to reduce the damage that you're taking, or classes like feral, ret, or to a lesser extent, enhancement, which can all help you survive with either their utility or off healing. All right, so let's talk about some tips and tricks to help min-max your healing throughput even more. I've touched on this throughout step two of this guide, and that's mana efficiency. This is often the difference between good priests and bad priests, how they manage their mana. The general concept to understand is that every ability which applies atonement costs a high amount of mana, whereas spells which heal via atonement cost significantly less. So for instance, a power word shield costs 1,550 mana for a very weak absorb. Shadow Mend is 1,750 for a decent heal, and Radiance is almost twice that at 3,250 mana per use. Whereas if we look at our damaging spells, Penance is 800, Smite is 200, Purge the Wicked is 900, and Mind Blast is 1,250. And then of course, Solace actually returns mana, giving you 500 per use, while Shadow Fiend again gives 500 every time it hits the target. We're not saying that you need to know these numbers by heart, but what we are saying is that understanding how much mana spells cost and just how big of an issue mana as a whole is for Disc Priests can really help to improve your efficiency and thus have a positive effect on your throughput. A popular trap that priests commonly fall into is spamming Power Word Shield every time Weakened Soul drops off. If you need single target healing, then Shadow Mend is almost always the better choice. The only exceptions to this are if you or your team needs a speed increase from Body and Soul, you need healing on the move, need to apply atonement with Trinity, or finally that you're using Rapture. Another cool tip is that Radiance can be used a multitude of different ways. This is because of its ability to ignore line of sight. As long as you can cast it on a teammate or yourself and the friendly target is within range, it will ignore all LOS effects, allowing you to essentially heal around pillars or even through them. All right, and the final step here to this video is going to be learning about interactions between us and other classes. Priest as a whole has quite a few. Staying on the Radiance topic, now that we know it ignores line of sight, it can actually be used as a tool to heal through a rogue smoke bomb or shadowy duel, just as long as either yourself or a teammate is in range of the player in the bomb or duel. If you're not in range, another great tip with rogues is that your barrier, unlike some other ground effects, like Earthen Wall for example, works through smoke bomb. 
So if you see a smoke bomb, you can place Power Word Barrier on top and give your ally some damage reduction. Then of course there is Shadow Word Death. Not only is this ability great at finishing targets off, but can also be used as a way to break enemy CC if used a second before it lands. The most common use for this is of course Polymorph, but on screen now you'll see a selection of different abilities which you're able to death. Alright, that's going to conclude part 2 of our Shadow Priest course on how to heal. Also, remember this was only part 2 of a 4 part Disc Priest course, so for more information on how to rotate CDs, play offensively, help your team set up kills, and an overview of how to play Priest in Arena, be sure to check out part 3 and 4 over on our website at skillcap.com wow. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.